Welcome, in front of me is a Xiaomi 15T Pro and today I will show you how we can go through the setup process of this device. So, when you boot it up for the first time you will be presented with the Android setup screen which starts off looking like this. Now here we only have one option so we'll it's the arrow, we're going to click on that and here we can choose our desired language from the list. Now, I'll be selecting English, but uh, let's make it, you know what, actually it's Espanol. Oh wow, let's select uh, English India. Um, only like 30% of the people uh, would fall under that category. So anyway, I'm um, going to go to the next page, which then allows us to select our region. Sometimes it will tell you I'll give you the option uh, right here at the top or selected by default of the region uh, that you have selected the language of so in this case it would have been India but for some reason not this time around it selects Poland which I am here um, I don't recommend changing uh, your region or selecting your region if you are the person that lives somewhere in like UK or US for, for you people I recommend changing it to Europe uh, to European Europe um, so, um, the reason I say that is because if there are any kind of laws, uh, theoretically, you should fall under the European Union laws for consumer rights. And historically, at least now, we have them. Uh, we have way better consumer rights than U.S., the land of the free, or U.K., the land of the freedom of speech that doesn't exist anymore, um, and also privacy doesn't exist there anymore. So by selecting it technically this company meaning xiaomi should abide by the region that you supposedly live in which would be european union something like poland and uh exclude you from whatever bullshit kind of uh laws are trying to be passed on and outside of that area like uk for mandatory id anyway um so i'm gonna select poland perfect place Next we have terms and conditions, we have user agreement, privacy policy, you can read both of those and uh, agree to them. It really doesn't make any difference if you read it or not, it's just a load of BS anyway. Moving on, um, set up using another device, so if you have another phone, you probably just got a pop-up like this. And uh, here you can just set up your uh, this device using an old one by just clicking on that old device setup. This would transfer over everything that is associated uh, with the Google account on the cloud and only on the cloud, uh, which uh, as a basically a setup, it's kind of piss poor to be completely honest, uh, as if, uh, God forbid, you never imported your contacts to the cloud, because how dare you not share other people's personal information like their names and phone numbers and other info that are assigned there with Google we won't be uh, up transferring this data over if we can't have it so i'm just gonna say skip that's the best thing you can do right here i it's gonna be checking for a sim card uh, and not find any you can insert a sim card right here if you want to or you can also activate eSIM though you will need internet connection for that or you can select skip and just ignore this this can all be changed later on after the setup is completed anyway so it doesn't really matter and here we have the connect to network you can do so, or you can skip it if you want to. Again, can be changed. Set screen lock. We have a couple options. So we have uh, under screen lock, we have a uh, pin pattern or password. Then we have fingerprint and face recognition. The two second ones um, are biometrics and biometrics aren't 100% reliable. So when choosing either one of those or both, you will always be forced to, to select a screen lock as this won't change based on a phone's whim if it can recognize you this time around or not because get forbid you ever get a tiny little blemish on your finger and no longer can unlock your phone so yeah that would leave you with a for instance pattern to unlock your device that isn't obviously gonna have a problem with a tiny blemish on your finger as long as that finger can draw the pattern correctly moving on we have uh, Google services, oh my favorite place. Uh, we have uh, services like location scanning and sending user and diagnostic data. Uh, now these all seem intrusive, I'm not gonna lie, and that's because they are. You can turn them all off, but they probably mean absolutely F all. Uh, if they would, companies wouldn't be in antitrust lawsuits. 
and additionally people wouldn't be found uh, for instance criminals by their phone when they do everything to make that phone untrackable like this and also basically not have a sim card not have internet connection wi-fi bluetooth and all that stuff and yet they still can be triangulated by their phone care to guess why it's not because user location doesn't use a location it's because user location limits it to wi-fi and gps god forbid it's uh tracking the radio waves or bluetooth signals or other garbage that can pinpoint where you are at any point and then send it through the other person's phone that this specific digital device with a number has been here so you don't really have privacy here even if you try to the best way to do that is to buy i don't know nokia 3310 or motorola razor not the new ones by the way anyway moving on we have basic settings now these are for xiaomi now typically i like xiaomi for what they're doing but this that's just kind of leaves a sour taste in my mouth so we have again location which we already turned off i could have looked at that xiaomi uh, you can see i tried to turn off location so follow that up automatic system updates uh, i also want to point out while we're talking about this automatic system updates mean absolutely f all it only won't give you the update to your uh to for instance to the new android version that when the device gets it uh but as if you're already aware, Google is rolling out the um, security feature that is designed to protect you as a user from malware that is uh, dangerously creeping around the internet just right outside, um, one click away from basically uh, sepooking your your phone from existence. Uh, so uh, I want to kind of talk about this because it's uh, absolute bullshit uh, from Google. Uh, so their reason for implementing uh, basically a DRM for their applications, as long as someone doesn't pay them money, uh, as a justification of oh, that's how we're going to bring security. Well, I don't know, dipshits, have you ever heard about antivirus instead of a DRM? Because I sure as shit did, and so did probably millions of other people around the world for the past 20 fucking years. But apparently that's not good enough. Oh, and... Uh, as an excuse that they're trying to protect you, by the way, uh, from malware applications. Oh, I don't know, how about you start, uh, as Google, how about you start with your own Play Store before you go pissing around other places uh, claiming that we care about your privacy. Go F off, fix your Play Store, then maybe consider even, not, not do something. And number three, it shouldn't be mandatory. It should be my choice if I want to install an application or not. Now, just to put that out there, it's kind of funny that as a protection method, we're the ones losing privacy um, and openness of a platform. And Google is going to be making more money because any kind of APK online will now need to be signed. And to be signed, developer needs to pay Google. Seems kind of fishy, doesn't it? Um, so this option right here will not affect uh, this... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say feature. This is such a wrong word for it. This abomination, this, uh, this atrocity would be probably closer. So automatic system updates are not touched upon this. And the reason for that is these kind of updates don't come to your device via these updates. They come via OTA ones, which you have no control or knowledge of coming into your phone. And the only way you can get rid of it, which you can, is by literally downloading the Android OTA service from your phone, which is deliberately designed to install updates without your permission, knowledge, or acceptance on your phone. But that also prevents you from getting uh, basically protection updates like the Android security updates to your device, which leaves your phone more vulnerable over time. So just know that this doesn't completely touch upon that. But truth be told, I have an old Android phone from like six years ago that hasn't been getting any updates for past, uh, I don't know, three, four years. It hasn't been hacked. Uh, anyway, moving on, we have a send user and agnostic data. Again, we did turn that off, so how about, how about you stay off? And moving on to the most egregious one in here is the personalized ads. 
Now, this is from Xiaomi, and Xiaomi wants you to basically share uh, what you search for, what you talk about. Yes, what you talk about by to the microphone. Uh, it's going to be listening to you all that freaking time, even though they claim not to. Uh, there are obviously ways to know that this is bullshit, because if I talk about dog food, I'm going to start getting ads based on dog food, even though I have never typed a single word of that into my search. So, uh, this, uh, I also want to point out, if you try to turn off, gets you this pop-up. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Are you sure you want to turn off this magnificent feature that basically spies on you? Yes, piss off. And I also want to point out the reverse psychology. Go F off. This shouldn't be legal. Um, so, turn that garbage off. They're the only reason why you should ever allow companies to share your data, because that's basically what they're doing, is if they're actually paying you for it. They're gathering your personal data on search and other things and selling it for their own profit. I sure should never received a cent of that, so why should I ever give it out? Now, moving on, we have uh, user experienced programs. Yeah, no thanks, I'm not going to be signing for that up. Uh, system uh, daemon permissions. What is that even? is used to improve system stability and performance. To be able to work normally, this service needs permission. Yeah, no. Uh, moving on, we have update all apps automatically. That's completely up to you. Uh, some apps, if they become outdated, they just refuse to work. So this might be something that you want to have enabled. And lastly, we have Xiaomi uh, interconnectivity. That's another new one that I have never seen here before. So uh, allows your device uh, to interact with each other wirelessly. Wow, so you mean do what every phone does? Um, by toggling the switch on, uh, you agree to the Xiaomi intercommunication privacy. Yeah, my phone can already communicate with things through Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and other means. I don't need this. Bon voyage. Next we have Parental control. This is completely up to you. It's self-explanatory. If you want to set it up, just set it up. Moving on, we have fonts. And we have two that are almost identical to each other. The only difference is one is just a little bit bigger. I'm going to stick with the default one. Next, we have select your uh, launcher or AKA uh, home screen mode. And we have the classic, which sure is classic for Apple users. Um, while app drawer is the OG classic de facto mode for Androids. And that's what I'm going to select. I prefer my applications neatly stored in an app tray where they are alphabetically sorted with categories because this launcher actually has categories for their apps, which is pretty nice. Uh, while classic just puts every application smack in the middle of your home screen in whatever order you install them. Next, we have navigation mode. We have buttons or gestures, gestures being selected by default. Choose whichever one you want. And this basically finishes up the setup. I love that it's preparing my system right now. Like it didn't have time to prepare it when I was talking about privacy. For like solid five minutes. Setup complete. Let's go. So there we go. Now. If you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.